아주 운 좋게 백신을 개발한다 그래도 그 시간 1년이나 3년 걸리는 동안 몇 십만 명이 일단 죽는 거거든요. 이런 일을 계속 반복할 수 있겠는가. 그래서 더 확실한 거는 자연과의 거리 두기. 자연을 잘 보호하는 일이 결국 우리를 보호하는 일이다 라는 차원에서 생태 백신을 우리가 스스로 접종하자는 거죠. 그동안 우리, 우리들 우리 중에 너무 많은 사람들은 자연을 너무 유린하고 살았으니까 이제는 우리 모두가 백신이라는 거는 두세 사람이 맞아서는 절대로 효율이 없는 거거든요. 그한 집단에 적어도 80%, 90%의 사람이 다 맞아야 효과가 나는 거예요. I remember in Gombe National Park, you know, where I study, where the chimp study is still going on. There was a terrible mudslide, and it was caused because the villagers outside Gombe had cut down the tree on a very steep slope to grow food because they're, you know, living in poverty. And after this, half the village was destroyed, and I think 11 people lost their lives. And so the villagers were saying, God is punishing us for cutting down the trees. And our people in our program went to them and said, no, no, it's not God, it's you. And I say, if it doesn't matter whether you think it's human responsibility or the gods being angry, it doesn't matter as long as they stop cutting down the trees. And they cannot stop cutting down the trees unless we help them find ways of feeding their family without destroying the environment. That's how our big JGI project began in Africa. Um, this pandemic somehow Uh, to many of us revealed the uh, shortcomings of the capitalism that we know. Many people say we can't really go on like this, you know, doing the same uh, business as usual. What do you think, if you have any opinion, the, what should we, uh, be the changes we should make in the capitalism per se? Well, I think we need a totally new uh, way of thinking about how we live. And at the moment, certainly in the, in the Western world and the affluent societies around the world, uh, their God has become money. And the sign of success is to acquire money and goods. And as long as people are feeling that the ultimate success Of, of an individual is how much money he can acquire, how many, uh, you know, how much stuff he can accumulate around him, then it's very hard. I mean, we, I think we understand what we should do, but we do need a new way of looking at things, how everybody should have a good life and have enough and that we need some money to live, but it goes wrong when we live for money. But whenever you, you give a lecture, you always talk about uh, every single one of us has a power. We change little things every day, then eventually uh, the world will change. I isn't that what we have to do? Yes, each one of us does indeed make a difference every day. And that's why, as you know, I'm passionate about our youth program, Roots and Shoots which began in 1991, and it's now in 65 countries.
find that people who've been in the Roots and Shoots program, where the main message is each one of us makes a difference every day, and we can choose what sort of difference we make, and where each group tackles projects to help people, animals and environment, because we're all intertwined. And we found that people who've been in that program as children maintain the values they acquired uh, as children, even when they're grown up. We've got examples of that. When I go to China, and I was there just before the pandemic, and there were people saying, but of course I care about the environment. I was in roots and shoots in primary school. And of course I care about animals. I learned about animals by watching you and the chimpanzees in Roots and Shoots in primary school. So it's, I'm Pat and I know you care about Roots and Shoots too. We've done great things together in South Korea. As you know, we have Roots and Shoots in Korea too. They're growing, uh, kind of a little slow, but uh, they're growing anyway. So, 마지막 수업이라는 시리즈를 지금 만들고 있어요. 그래서 저는 그 아이들과 지금 그냥 놀면서 자연을 이해하고 그 자연을 이해하는 데서 끝나는 게 아니라 그걸 분석하면서 그게 지적으로 그들이 그 아이들에게 어떤 도움이 될지 또 그들이 앞으로 살아가야 되는 우리 이 세상에 또 어떤 도움이 되는지 뭐 이런 것까지 한번 폭넓게 이렇게 고민해 보고 같이 이렇게 하는 할 거거든요. 
But children today, they haven't been through that. So they take things for granted because, because that's all they've ever known. So it's a, a sad fact. Does it take going through a, an absolutely terrible situation to give us proper moral values? That's a sad way of looking at it, isn't it? Well, um, let's hope uh, something will change. Let me talk about some, some bright uh, story. Do you remember Jedor, the, the dolphin we sent back to ocean? <clears throat> when you came to Korea, I believe in 2012, uh, you gave a tremendous, uh, you gave us a tremendous boost to that activity. So we eventually released him and his four uh, friends. So now five of them are swimming, swimming around in Jeju Ocean. They're doing very well. Uh, I'm happy to report to you. And among five, three of them are females. All three females have babies now. Oh, Isn't that wonderful? Jedol look tired. What's the matter, Jedol? Jean asked after the show was over. I don't want to do shows anymore, Jodol replied in a small voice. That event uh, was a very meaningful event in in Korea. We never had that kind of uh, that kind of activity before. So, to many people, uh, it, it gave a, a, a very new kind of feeling. We can protect nature. So it, it was a, a very interesting moment in Korean history, in my opinion. We are changing, our morals are improving when it comes to our relationship with animals. And nature's resilient. Tell us a little bit about uh, factory farming. I and mean, you've, been, you've been very uh, advocate about this issue. Yes, well, it was thanks, I think, to the chimpanzees that science began to seriously consider that animals are sentient beings. So the thing is that now from chimpanzees, we can ascribe the same kind of feelings of fear, pain, distress in elephants, in dolphins, in birds, um, in pigs, in the domestic animals, in other words. And so all of these animals crowded together in these terrible conditions, the wildlife meat markets, but then there's the domestic factory farms. And all these are individual animals with their own pain and suffering. And they're all sentient beings. That's why I'm really a passionate advocate for, for closing down factory farms. Isn't that part of the reasons why you change to um... Uh, to uh, what's what's the uh, what's the word uh, vegetarian uh, eating? Oh, since the late sixties, I read Peter Singer's book *Animal Liberation*. When I left for Gombe, there were no factory farms in the UK. I didn't know they existed. When I read about them, I was so 
shock that the next time I saw a piece of meat on my plate, I thought, this symbolizes fear, pain, death. That was the last piece of meat on my plate. You know, but most, most people um, say, I, I would say most doctors tell us when you get older, you need, uh, you know, animal protein or you need uh, uh, meat to get stronger. You, you, you must eat uh, meat, but you're not eating meat, but you look fine and you're, you're going strong. What, what's, what's the secret to your health? Secret is the doctors are totally wrong. My grandmother didn't eat meat uh, for most of her life. She died at 98. My mother didn't eat meat. She died at 96. Her sister didn't eat meat. She died at 97. Well, I'm a kid compared to that. I'm only 86. <laughs> As you know, we have overcome many crises before. And do you think the humanity will somehow survive uh, more or less uh, uh, intact through this uh, crisis we're, we're going through? Well, we'll certainly absolutely survive. You know, we have, we've survived World War II. I lived through it. We survived before that World War I, which was worse. South Korea, you've survived uh, Japanese colonialism. Then we survived 9-11 when the Twin Towers came down. People all around the world in countries like Syria are getting through terrible wars and they're surviving, although at huge cost. So yeah, we'll get through it, but whether we'll manage to survive the climate crisis unless we really change, that's another matter. It's really up to each one of us to do everything we possibly can as an individual. And of course, some people can do way more than others. But if everybody does their bit, if everybody tries to leave a lighter ecological footprint. Do you remember when I arrived once and you took me to wherever I was staying and I had to put my feet into a gooey mess because you wanted a cast <laughs> of them? <laughs> yes. Footprint的嘛，만들어서，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，
Um, it's this incredible intellect that we have that is enabling us to find ways of living in greater harmony with nature, with technology, but also in our own individual lives. And then this indomitable human spirit where people tackle what seems to be impossible and they don't give in. And so up on this little plaque that I have, it says, never, never, never quit. So you and I will not quit our fight to save the planet, will we? And hopefully millions of others are joined in that fight and together we shall prevail. Well, could you um, tell us uh, directly to Korean people, address something, you know, cheerful or whatever word you, you want to give us? All right, the Korean people, I would say just just remember that you, each one of you, uh, has a role to play in this crazy life that we're involved in. And each one of you actually makes some kind of difference every single day that you live. And you can choose what kind of difference you make. Are you going to, at the end of the day, feel that you've made the world a little bit better? Or perhaps not? So that is the uh, responsibility for each single one of us. So I think I end, since we're all separated and locked down and things like that, the most appropriate way of greeting is how the chimpanzees greet each other when they're separated from one valley to another. And it's... <laughs> That's me, Jane. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm so glad to see you in good health. Yes, well, I'm glad to see you in good health, too. And I blow you a distance kiss, Jay. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. And bye, everybody listening. unless we really change. That's another matter. Uh, responsibility for each single one of us. Do I hear bird chirp, chirp in, your, in your background? No? I'll send you the, uh, the little video I did because the bird is so loud I had to stop talking. It was a <laughs> robin. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I'll send it to you so you see that little interaction between me and the bird interaction or interruption, I guess. <laughs>